really have a sermon title, but what I'm going to be speaking on this morning is encouraging yourself in the Lord. And the text we're going to go with is going to be found in 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 6. That's 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 6. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. 1 Samuel 30 and 8. We're going to skip down there real quick. And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this enemy? Shall I overtake them? And church, I want you to pay attention. I want you to draw into this real quick of what God answered to David. And he said, David, you shall surely pursue the enemy. You shall overtake him. And without fail, recover it all. You know, it's one thing when you go into battle, an area of your life, when it just seems like it's been one thing after another. And it's one thing to go into crisis and battle and come out of that with the things that you went in. But it's it's a blessing in itself when you go into battle, but you come out with more than what you ever went in with. And we're going to see that right here in David's story. And I always like to just kind of get a brief description of the person that we're, we're looking at in the Word of God because maybe we've got some new people in their walk with uh, God and maybe they're not familiar with the Word, you know, as much as some of us are. And that's okay. But the Bible says that David was a man after God's own heart. We first get familiar with him as the son of a farmer. He was a shepherd boy. He was out in the field tending sheep. And then he rose to fame as this Philistine giant come up and brought battle towards David's people. We see that he grabs a sling and a stone, and he went after that giant. Then we see that God anointed him the king of of Israel, and his story didn't just stop there. It's through David that we see there's a direct relation to our Savior, Jesus Christ. And aren't you so thankful that in the moment of battle, And despair that David learned something that would be his turning point. David learned how to encourage himself in the Lord. And you know, sometimes life throws those unexpected curveballs at us. A lot of times, it's hard enough when we have the battle that we see coming. But more often than not, it's the battle that we didn't see coming that a lot of times leaves us on the back, laying on our back with the breath out of us. Maybe it leaves us in a pit of despair wondering, will I ever climb out of this? Is this going to continue for the rest of my life? Everything seems like it's been lost. The enemy has stolen everything. I've lost hope. Just to give you a summary of David's battle and journey, there in 1 Samuel chapter 30. We're not going to read the whole chapter, but I'm going to give you a summary. It says that David had an army of mighty men. To be, I believe to be exact, it was 600 David and his mighty men, they were on this battle streak. They had been winning win after win. They were conquering city after city. Have you ever been in life to where everything's just going great? Everything that you've been planning on, it's going according to purpose. There's no hindrances. There's nothing coming out unexpected. That's what it was like for David at this moment. They were winning win after win, conquering city after city, recovering resource after resource. And, you know, after battling for so long, I believe they were in battle for three months. After battling for so long, I think it's fair to say you'd be ready to go back home. You would be ready to go back to the very things that you were fighting for protection for, that you were battling for. You'd be ready to go back home. You know, they were ready. Those mighty army men were ready to go hold their wives, you know, and see their children. And they were ready to find comfort and rest in their own homes. When you think of a home, a lot of times for me, I think it's an escape from the outside world. It's a place that I want to be able to go to and recover and recharge. And that's what David and his mighty men were looking for. They were excited to go home and tell their wives and their children of the victories they had won. They were excited to show them of the treasures they had stored back and they had captured. And and as they're in closing on their journey home, 
David and his army men, they're looking in the direction, they're enclosing, and they're, and they're, they're finishing up the last few miles close to home. And they notice, I would figure it would have to be a dark, devastating sight to see. They notice a cloud of smoke over the same area that their home's in. And, you know, you're coming out of battle in one area with victory, and then you're, you're headed back home. And the very thing that you're going to to get rest in, despairs hit it and destruction. And that was the situation that David had found himself in. They had found themselves in unforeseen circumstance, a time of anxiety and heartbrokenness. I don't know, you know, I feel like coming out of 2023, I had walked through a time of anxiety and oppression and fear, and while there's times, yes, I'd have my hands lifted to God, I really didn't feel like praising him. There was times I would say he's good, but honestly, I was questioning, is he really? And there was times that I was looking for him because I felt like I had been abandoned. Have you ever been there? Maybe, you know, life's just burned you. Maybe the people in your life that you have poured into and you had cared for and you have loved and you have spent time with, maybe they've burned you. Maybe there is situation in your life that you, with your own decision, have burned yourself. Looking back a few years ago, uh, I, I can see that there's definitely a decision that I made in my life that I've caused some own burns and I've had to look to him to get me out of it. So maybe you've got like two situations going on. Like David had two situations going on. He had just come out of blessing over here, victory after victory, but then he had battle over here. Maybe you've got like an Ishmael rising up in, in your house like Abraham and Sarah did, but you've got Isaac coming up at the same time time and it's a very conflicting season to walk in if you've ever had to walk in it it sounds like a season looking from the outside in it sounds very noble and strong to watch somebody else walk through it but until you're in those shoes it's very hard and it can be very oppressive it can be very scary it can be a time that you feel like you're in a time of abandonment heartbreaking worry fear that's exactly what David was going through Skip down to 1 Samuel. We're going we're gonna to hold up on that. And the Bible says that the, the people who were with David, they wept until they couldn't weep anymore. Have you ever had a situation in your life that you have cried over it and you have prayed over it and you have sought God's face over it and you have dealt with it and you're, and you're just tired of calling your friends about it and you're, you're tired of texting your friends about it and you're tired of worrying over it and you're tired of putting all your energy in it and you've cried until you just can't cry anymore. That's where David was. That, to me, is complete hopelessness. The Bible says that not only was David's home burned, but his wives had been enslaved and his children had been kidnapped. So not only was David homeless, but he was lonely and he was broke because the enemy had snuck in while he was focused over here and putting all his energy and his time in this situation over here. The enemy had come in and the Amalekites had invaded. Have you ever had a situation in your life where you're so focused on this thing going good, you didn't expect this thing to uprise, and it's hit you out of nowhere. Amen. It's a hard situation to walk in. I think for some of us, we can all look back at COVID. It seemed like, for my family in particular, it seemed like since COVID had rose in, while I have them all here in health, it just seems like it had been trial and tribulation, one after another. It's just been circumstance after circumstance, situation after situation. And it just felt like, just felt like life had burned down. Have you ever been around those Christians to where it just seems like sometimes, yes, Christians, when you're going through that heartache in life, they just want to act like they put on this hard shelled persona, and maybe they give you some cliche saying, or a Bible verse, and they just want to leave you there. And you're still feeling broke and they're hard hearted and they don't and they act as if you can't express the pain you're going through. These people 
as they were going through this heartache. The Bible says that they wept until they could weep no more. That's some heartache. And text shows us that we can have the freedom to release that. And that's exactly what David did. He had cried until he couldn't cry anymore. He was broken. Maybe you've had that job situation where they laid you off and you didn't expect it. Maybe that person walked out on you that you thought you'd be in a relationship or friends with always. Maybe they abandoned you. Maybe your health has failed you. The turning point for David was he wept until he couldn't weep anymore. But the Bible says that he encouraged himself and the Lord, his God. That's your turning point. When it seems like your family's abandoned you, when it seems like your finances won't cover you, when it seems like your health is failing you, you've got to learn how to deep, dig deep down. And I know it's hard. And oftentimes we don't feel like bringing out that position of praise. But David learned how to let worship be his warfare in the face of adversity. You've got to learn how to let your worship be your warfare in the face of adversity. You've got to encourage yourself. How do you encourage yourself, Brother Matt? Because right now I don't feel very encouraged. I don't feel encouragement. I don't feel hope. I don't feel joy. Well, you encourage yourself by remembering past victories. The Bible says that David encouraged himself in the Lord, and I believe that looked something like David going over the fact and remembering of when that lion come out into the field of sheep and God anointed him to slay it. Or when he was anointed king of Israel and God had put that position over his life. Or how he picked up that sling of five stones and, he's, and he killed that giant. And he said, I can encourage myself because I've seen everything that God's brought me from in the past. I can ride off the past victories to take me to my next victory because God was with me. That's where you've got to be at, church. You've got to learn how to encourage yourself in the heartache. You've got to learn how to encourage yourself in the oppression. You've got to learn how to encourage yourself in the abandonment. And then the next thing that you've got to do, you've got to remember God's protection over your life. And you, and, and you may be like, well, you know, Brother Matt, I've never had to slay a lion. I don't even own sheep. No, but you've had a giant in your life. Maybe some of you have dealt with the giant of abandonment or the, the giant of depression, the giant of suicide. We all face battles, and we can cry over it, and we can call out to God on it, but there's got to be a breaking point. You cannot make your bed in it. And in 2023, it just seemed like it was a year of roller coaster for me. It seemed like it was a year of blessing and battle. Some of you know that as my wife and I were trying to build a house, previously it was hit by a storm, and there was a lot of turmoil with that. And I'm worrying with getting this house built for my family, to provide for my family a home like you're supposed to. And then I'm balancing being a father to my children and trying to balance being a husband to my wife. And I just feel like my plate's so overloaded. I, I feel like in today's world and culture, everybody's plates are so overloaded. We're just spread out so much. I just feel like we're trying to juggle so many things all at once. And it's overwhelming. But the thing is, the Bible says that the anointing breaks the yoke of bondage. We can cast our cares on him because he does care for us. But when you're going through that moment, it doesn't feel like he cares. If anything, I got mad at God when I was going through the storm of my home. When my parents divorced after 28 years and the enemy ran in and questioned me, how much longer will it be till your marriage fails? Or when I felt like God was directing me in a new path in my career. And a car hit me and destroyed the trailer that I use to haul the commodity that I haul. And I, was, I got out of the cab 
and I was angry with God. I said, God, why did you allow this? You've, I feel like you have led me in this direction, in this path of a career to provide for my family, and the very thing that you have provided me with to provide my family with is destroyed now. Where are you, God? You said you would be here, and it's like that family of Lazarus moment, but you've been too late. And let me tell you, God always has a ram in the bush. He always takes care of his people. And God provided a trailer for me to be able to to get and work out. And so I was able to go back to work. It was about two months before we got that. And I I went back to the farm and covered there. And and it was just a really stressful season of just kind of having to trust God in that moment. And I go back to, to my freight job. And I'm headed back to the warehouse to get a load. And the engine of my truck starts to roar. And I remember anxiety rushing in. And, you know, truck drivers, they tend to be really manly men and all this. And there's about 20 or 30 truck drivers out there. And I just remember being in the cab of that truck, not caring a thing in the world what people thought about me. And I just began to break down. And I had a moment like David. And I just cried until I couldn't cry anymore. And I told God, I said, you said you'd be here again. It looks like you've failed me. And aren't you thankful for that still, small voice? I live for the moments when he comes in and he whispers. You know, not necessarily like an audible, audible voice, but he whispers scripture to your heart that he's already spoken his word. And, and I just remember him saying, though he slay me. Though he slay me. And I couldn't remember the, the, the past portion or the next portion of that, that scripture, so I ran to try to find it. And I thought it was in Psalms, but I believe it's in Job 13. 15, if I'm correct, though he slay me, and it's, it's kind of in my banner, though he slay me, I will trust in him. I will maintain my ways before him. And it's the maintaining your ways before him that's so hard. I believe we can all agree, agree on that. It's hard when adversity comes to attack and doubt sets in and you've got the enemy rushing in to speak fear against you. It's hard. But he spoke to my heart and he said, though he slay me, I will trust in him. I will maintain my ways before him. And there's got to come to a point in your life, no matter how dark it gets. And I know that it's, there's some dark times in your life. There's been some in mine. Some intrusive thoughts have maybe slipped in. And maybe you thought, well, maybe people would be better without me after all. Maybe you thought your family would be better without, you know, you there after all. And the enemy comes in and, and he rushes and he tells you lies. You've got to dig down deep and let your worship be your warfare. You've got to praise. And you've got to learn to encourage yourself in the Lord. And that's what David did. It was his turning point. And I love, I love at that turning point that David got angry with the enemy. Sometimes you just got to get angry at the enemy. I'm tired of the, ang- er, of the enemy having victory over my family. I'm tired of the enemy having victory over my finances. I'm tired of the enemy having victory over my health. I'm tired of it, and I'm going to encourage myself and the Lord. My wife's not here to encourage me. You know, wives, maybe you feel like your husband's not there to encourage you. Parents, maybe you feel like you've got up in age and your children's not there to help carry you on in that stage of life. Maybe you feel like you've been forgotten. You've got to encourage yourself in the Lord. And that's exactly what David did in Samuel 1, 1 Samuel chapter 30. He encouraged himself in the Lord. The Bible says that David got angry at the enemy, and he went to the enemy's camp, and he took back everything that the enemy had stole from him. His wife had got rescued. She's back home. His family's restored. He's got his children, his finances. He took back what he had, what the enemy stole. His finances are financing again. But he didn't just recoup what he went in. He didn't just break even. The Bible says that he recovered it all. And when you encourage yourself in the Lord, have faith, you're going to recover it all. I don't believe in prosperity messages. I don't believe it's God's will for you to go down Beverly Hills in a Rolls Royce. But I do believe he takes care of his people. When we trust him 
and when we don't. He's never left me empty-handed, and he never will leave you empty-handed. David said, though I was young and now I'm old, all the days of my life I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor the children begging for bread. He is my strong tower. Sometimes you've got to go back and you've got to remember past victories to carry you to your next victory. Then you've got to remember God's protection. I remember when that car hit me going 80 to 90 down the highway and it destroyed my trailer. But I got out of the cab of that truck without a bruise or a scratch or or an ounce of whiplash. I remember how that other driver was carried to the med, two broken legs, a broken arm. And I believe they said he had a crushed chest or ribs. But God spared me. God was with me and I came out of it. That thing that was meant to destroy me didn't because God was with me. You've got to speak to the enemy. You've got to remind him who you are and whose you are. That's exactly what David did. He encouraged himself in the Lord. And to the brokenhearted, if there's any brokenhearted in this room, can I encourage you? It ain't going to be dark for long. Can I encourage you? It won't be dark forever. I know what it's like to be in that deep, dark tunnel. I know what it's like to be hopeless. But he is my hope. Encourage yourself. Remember the past victories. Remember the protection God has put over your life. And then remember who your God is. He is my fortress. He is my provider. He is a way maker. He is my healer. He is my victory banner when the enemy has brought battle against me. He is my savior. He is my king. And there's a song that we sing here at church that, and you can find it in scripture, it says that I saw the Lord seated on his throne and he was clothed in glory and he was lifted high and the train of his robe filled the temple. How many knows that the train of his robe fills the temple? I didn't always know what that meant, but I had to look into scripture to see what to see exactly what it was talking about. And custom in ancient biblical time, when a king would rise up against another king's camp and he would go to battle, when he would win that victory, the winning king would cut off the train of the losing king's robe and he would sew it to his, showing glory and victory and that he did not lose the battle. And scripture says that the train of the robe of my king of my life fills the temple he's never lost a battle there's not one thing i'll face he's not ever went he's not already went before me with my finances the victory in my finances are attached to the train of his robe the victory of depression over depression is attached to the train of his robe the victory of my heartbreak is attached to the train of his robe Child of God, it's okay to be angry at him. The Bible says that he's Abba Father. In that translation, we see that that's recognizing God as a good father who has favor and care towards his children. I never realized the love that he had for me. Maybe some of you didn't really have a good relationship with your father, your earthly father. And maybe you're learning what the love of a father really is now that you've walked into that relationship with Christ. I didn't really understand the love of the Father until I became a father myself. My children come at me and they may be angry with me. My children may come at me and they may question me, but it doesn't change my favor towards them. Your father's favor and your father's love is not changed towards you because of how you are feeling and the experience you are going through. Encourage yourself in the Lord. His train fills the temple. He holds all victory. Might have been a, and I just want to give anybody the opportunity. I believe we're all saved here. But if you're not saved and you would love to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I'd love to extend that invitation to you. It's free. He's paid it all. And if there's anybody here who's needing encouragement, maybe you're you're facing battle 
or heartache or a situation that you're uncertain with and you'd like to be prayed for. If you want to feel, if you're comfortable to pray at your seat, you're more than welcome to pray at your seat. If you want to come forward and pray, we'll pray with you. I want you to know that you are not in this alone, but sometimes you're going to have to encourage yourself in the Lord. Pastor can't carry you through it. Friends and family is not going to be able to carry you through it. But you're going to have to encourage yourself in the Lord, your God. He will carry you through it. He cares for the sparrow. How much more does he care for?